side, but that won't uh, uh, won't be a faithful representation. Activities, so where they go for social interaction, for like an option like to fit to fit the the circle that. I, I really like your the, the the visualization in terms of grouping by color. The epidemic starts in the United States as a few faint red edges appear around New York City, indicating infected commuters. It progresses through much of the country, but the light airport basin colors show that not many people are infected. However, the infection really takes off in Central and South America, as well as Australia, which are filled with dark basins, eventually spreading to Africa, India, and China. In the second peak of the infection cycle, it takes root in Europe, North America, and Northern Asia. These peaks show up in the infection histogram at the top of the screen and correspond with seasonal changes in climate across these hemispheres. Finally, the infection dies off after almost a year of spreading. One problem in this map view is that it is very difficult to see from an overall level how the infection is spreading within individual countries or dense geographic regions. The size coding of individual borders to show the number of commuters is difficult to perceive at this scale. For example, Europe and the eastern United States have many small dense regions to look at. Users can get some information from tooltips, however that is not enough in order to see the infection spread. To, to visualize that and I think that is brilliant the idea of using you know a kind of width and color for the for the boundary that uh, tells us how many people are now in a sense going from one region to another carrying the infection so I think this is already something uh, very uh, very powerful in terms of what we can see from uh, from a visualization I say, oh here's the, 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 the diffusion network right now and here's how like your region is coupled to other stuff so I can see this is like a more uh, it's very useful explorer analysis in terms of showing that the, the uh, where, where, where is the transmission is and where it can go next let's take a look at a different view first let's color the basins categorically by the region they belong to then we can morph these regions using a centroidal Voronoi tessellation with a centroidal Voronoi tessellation, we expand or shrink each basin so that they are about the same size, roughly hexagonal, and fill the screen space. Yet it preserves the relative positions of basins to each other. We see the regions of the world separated with categorical coloring, and we can add labels to help differentiate them as well. Between geographic regions, we have hashed edges or fences. Thick fences separate continents, while small fences separate individual countries. Here we change the labeling to show countries instead of regions. We can also add landmark labels including the top airports in each country. In the United States, we see that Boston is above Philadelphia, which is above Baltimore, which is above Miami. The positions of these cities relative to each other is preserved despite the substantial morphing of the world. We can change the coloring back to infection to see the current state of the epidemic. Sized borders indicate the number of commuters, while color again shows the ratio of them which are infected. We can even go back to the beginning and play through time to see how this infection evolves. We can more clearly see the infection start around New York City and spread to other major East Coast cities of the United States, before eventually jumping to Central and South America, where it is able to take root in the population and spread rapidly during the winter. If you look at specific cities of the United States, such as Baltimore, we see that a large ratio of infected people travel between Baltimore and DC and Baltimore and Philadelphia. However, other adjacent basins do not have these commuting relationships. Similarly, around Atlanta, we see infected commuting to some of the adjacent basins, but not others. This was not clear in the map view. If we continue the simulation, we see the infection spread throughout the world, first in the southern hemisphere, and again into the northern hemisphere during the second peak. The countability of these hexagons makes it much easier to tell how many of these basins have high infection rates. I mean, 
I can understand that these are like the continents or countries or regions, but still I think the map works better for me, for instance. Okay. All right, so I have a third. It's a nice, interesting uh, way to collapse the geographical information without, you know, with, uh, keeping a, a kind of uh, uh, reference frame of all countries and continents, but, you know, losing the just the, the classic map approach that in some cases it's, uh, it's misleading in epidemics because things that seem unrelated are actually related and here you see it more clearly. So, for instance, you see that there is from Hanoi, Vietnam, you go to Thailand. This view excels at showing the local commuting relationships between adjacent basins. However, it does not allow us to easily see global travel via flights. We could add arcs on top of this visualization, which would make it rather cluttered. Instead, we've created a meta layout based on the centroidal Voronoi tessellation. First, let's color the regions of the world categorically. Then, we'll morph the visualization into a meta layout where each region is separated into a circle and the circles are arranged according to a force-directed layout. We're using the same centroidal Voronoi tessellation visualization for the basins within each region. However, now we have these thick aggregate edges between regions, which indicate the total number of people flying between them with size, and the ratio of infected with color. We can add labels and categorical coloring for each country so we're able to see the division of each region. Changing back to the infection color scale, we're able to see at a glance which regions are infected this week, as well as the aggregate relationships between regions. If we start the simulation from the beginning, we see the first flights with infected are between North America and Europe. We can also animate through the remaining weeks and watch how the epidemic evolves. Uh huh. Oh, it's, it's a pretty nice visualization. Uh, so it's not just so easy to view. I mean, the country's name. I, I don't know why. It's maybe because form. We have continents. We have regions of the world. The countries within that. You see the uh, short range spreading. At the same time, you can evaluate what is the flows uh, across the different uh, uh, continents or geographical regions. Uh, uh, in terms of the airline uh, and long-range uh, traffic connection. So I would say that this is, uh, this is a very powerful visualization, yeah.